Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Uh, I am just cleaning up some mess here from some opening that is sadly over. The uh, dopamine of cracking those packs has long gone away. Uh, and, uh, you know, I would love to just have a channel where I just un unopened stuff. And that's all the content I do is just cracking packs. But unfortunately, uh, that's not in my economic bracket. So instead, uh, I've got a plan for doing some different content and uh, I'm gonna uh, just see how it goes uh, if you like some of the content ideas please let me know uh, if you've got suggestions I'd also love to to hear those too in the comments so we're gonna start today with a uh, video that showcases showcases some of the artwork in magic's history that I would argue is beautiful so we will get to that very soon but first <laughs> All right, so my plan is to go through and select some cards that I would argue are beautiful magic cards. Now, beautiful is a very subjective term, and so I don't mean to get too academic on this, but I think it's worth clarifying what I mean by beautiful, because what I don't necessarily mean by beautiful is pretty, although we may look at some very pretty cards. Uh, instead, I'd like to use Poe's definition of beautiful, Edgar Allan Poe basically define beauty as either elevation or delevation, if that's a word, uh, of the human soul. In fact, uh, Edgar Allan Poe thought that delevation was so effective uh, that he, he often wrote about dark, miserable, scary, uh, depressing things because he felt that that downward movement was a more beautiful movement uh, than the uplifting one. So basically, uh, we're going to look at an assortment of artwork uh, starting with this video today. Uh, and this is a series that I hope to carry over into the future. Uh, my plan is to try to have some themes for each video and the artwork uh, to, to kind of keep it cohesive. But also, uh, I'd like to try to showcase one card of each uh, color. Now, today's theme, since it seems like right now, because of time shifted popularity, uh, the rage right now in the art community of magic is going to be that old style, that old flavor border uh, of artwork. I have selected some cards that are older in style, uh, and let's just go through these, and, and I'll tell you why I think they're beautiful, and you are free to disagree or agree, uh, because, you know, art, hey, it's subjective. Uh, we, we don't have to agree. So we'll start with uh, card number one. This is the original artwork for uh, <laughs> Nevin, uh, Nevin Ural's disc. Nevin Ural's disc. There we go. Um, I, I think it was uh, one of the, sh maybe uh, Innistrad, one of the Innistrad uh, sets that we really started to get a, a Lovecraft feel, a Lovecraft flavor to the magic uh, community. Uh, and, and magic artwork and stuff. But I would argue that that Lovecraft tone is definitely present uh, in this artwork. I mean, this is a good artifact, by the way. This is definitely a playable card. Uh, I, I have it in deck. But uh, the artwork, the updated artwork, I think it's flashier. Uh, it's it's Maybe it's prettier. But this one, to me, this one is more beautiful. Because if you look at that pendant, uh, I, I think it really does kind of set that tone of dread where you see those Lovecraftian tendrils uh, that are coming out from the abyss inside this locket. And of course, the effect is that if you can pay one and tap it, it destroys all creatures, enchantments, and artifacts. So this includes you, the player who's tapping it as well. Uh, so this is one of those, you know, um, I never really understood with... Uh, H.P. Lovecraft stuff, you know, that they worship Cthulhu and stuff, and it's like, well, wait, the worshippers who are worshipping Cthulhu, don't they understand that when Cthulhu destroys the world, like, they, they live on the world that Cthulhu is destroying. So it's just like, wait, you'll still be destroyed. It doesn't matter if you're worshipping it or not. Uh, but yeah, I would argue that this, the emotional movement of kind of that dread 
uh, and 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 that fear of man when this that was when this thing hits the battlefield, uh, it's it's just a timer. It's a time clock, and and it's a race to see who can remove it, uh, because you definitely don't want this to trigger. Uh, and I do like the the artwork here with these tendrils coming out from the abyss do seem to match that dread. We'll move on to blue, and right now uh, with Strixhaven's magical. Uh, what is it? The Mystical Archives. We definitely have an appreciation for the Japanese art style. Uh, I would argue that even before, I think it was Three Kingdoms, uh, which was a Jap uh, Japan-focused, uh, or at least an Asian-focused set, uh, I, I think this definitely has a, a Japanese flavor to it. This reminds me of a uh, wood engraving painting called The Wave. Uh, and, and I mean, it's a, it's a good, uh, again, this is a good spell. I mean, this is definitely playable, uh, in decks, but also just the artwork. I, I like that, uh, the art of the waves, very calm, but also destructive. You have the red background and yeah, I like the, the, uh, older style border of blue, I think complements the waves very well. So yeah, blue, uh, blue elemental blast has a thumbs up for me for being a, Beautiful card. This makes me feel powerful when I look at it. All right, the next card is going to be green. And of course, I love green. So green's going to have a story. This is Tempest Regeneration. So um, I do love literature, and I can't help but look at this and think of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. And if you've ever had the pleasure of reading Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, you may remember uh, the basic plot is that Arthur... King Arthur and his knights are having a Christmas celebration, and this mysterious green knight appears and issues a challenge, uh, a challenge to the round table, as well as King Arthur, saying that uh, we are going to have a contest. One of you may strike me any blow, and one year from today I will return, and I will revisit the blow you strike upon me today onto you. Now, of course, the smart thing would be to, like, you know, just be like, hey, Okay, I'll do it, and just kind of smack him on the butt with the uh, <laughs> the blunt side of your sword, and then say, "Hey, come on, let's have a drink." And you can come back in here and you smack me in the in the butt too with the sword uh, in a year. But no, uh, Gawain <laughs> decides to lop off the head of the Green Knight who's issued the challenge, and then surprisingly, uh, once the Green Knight's head is severed, he just goes over and picks it up. And rides off. And uh, of course, mystery and adventure ensues after that. But this is another great card. I do love that expression. To me, the beauty uh, of this lies with the contrast of the gore. I mean, look, we even got the little spinal column in there. But also, look at that expression. I mean, that expression is just like letting you know that you done messed up, A.A. Ron. That, uh, yeah, this creature is unfazed by. I mean, this is like the Black Knight from Monty Python. It's it's just a flesh wound. Um, I, I would argue that just the power that this card depicts, as well as the contrast of the gore. I do. I mean, magic cards they used to be gory. That was cool. I mean, who doesn't like a little gore? Uh, I, I'd argue this is a beautiful green card. All right, next card is one. If you've watched the channel, you won't be surprised to see. Oh, okay, so this is Delevating My Soul. This card, Dark Privilege. This seems like whoever came up with this artwork combine about four different creatures that terrified me when I was a kid. You've got here gremlins. You've got a little bit of critters. You've got a little bit of Screaming Delta Demon from those who are familiar with uh, Opryland USA Ride. And you've also got a little bit of the Gargoyle from the wonderful uh, Tales from the Dark Side short film. Uh, even still, like, <laughs> I'm here safe in my house, uh, lights are on, well lit for video, and it's still like, man, just look at that. Feel your soul delevate. Um, such good artwork. And of course you've got here... We don't know what's in there, but we can guess that that's not Kool-Aid. Dark Privilege, I think, is a Delevation of the Soul card, definitely. Moving on, we've got here a red spell. Red is all about burn, and I think that this card, better than really any other I can think of off the top of my head, 
really shows the power of red burn, and that is disintegrate. Just wiped from ex existence, just reduced to ash. In fact, I like this card so much that I was able to get the foil version of it. Uh, a little bit of wear on it, but I still think it's, boy, it sure is pretty when it shines. Uh, this card, just seeing the complete destruction of red, uh, that not only flesh and bone, but also the man-made material of steel and leather just disintegrates uh, in the face of red's fury. That is beautiful. All right, the next card is a special one in my heart. This is arguably my favorite piece of magic artwork. I remember getting my first magic deck. It was, I want to say, like, fourth edition starter deck. And uh, this card was in here, and I fell in love with it. This, to me, really just uh, encapsulates the power of good in the face of evil, and that is the card Holy Strength. This, to me, is a dream playmat. If I could ever just customize to get any playmat I wanted, it would definitely be Holy Strength. When I look at this, I see goodness faced with the overwhelming weariness that evil can, can make us feel. And it feels like in that 11th hour when we feel our legs begin to sag and we feel the, the, our spine uh, begin to bow to the evil that oppresses us. This holy strength makes me think of uh, what the reality is, that goodness will prevail. This is in The Last Dragon, when Bruce Leroy uh, is being <laughs> drowned by Shonuff, the Shogun of Harlem. Uh, and he looks within himself and he finds that the glow that he has pursued the whole movie uh, is to be found within himself. And he does uh, break free and he does embrace the glow and the strength that it gives. That, my friends, is holy strength goodness will win. I do love that artwork. It is an elevation of the soul for me, and it's beautiful. All right, those are the cards I wanted to showcase for beautiful, but I do have one here that um, no offense whatsoever for the artist of this artwork, but I'd also like to showcase, I don't want to say it's an ugly card, but we're just going to say I'd like to showcase a problematic card for me, and the problems are going to be probably very personal problems. Um, that may not be problems for anyone else. So here is my first entry, uh, and, and the only one we have this week, into problematic for me uh, art styles, art features of magic cards of the past. And it comes from Magmasaur. This is back from Tempest. Okay, some of you may have children. Some of you may have seen babies. And there's something as a parent or maybe as an uncle or a big brother, big sister, there's something that you'll see that you can never unsee. And that is a baby spitting up. Uh, it is a <laughs> life-changing experience, and that baby spit up is all I can think of when I look at this card. Poor Magmasaur. I mean, I like the I like the art style as far as how it's drawn. It reminds me of like a stop motion creature that you would see in like Jason and the Argonauts or an old Hercules movie. But I can't help but think Magmasar just leaned over too far after drinking his lava milk and out it comes. So yeah, uh, I'm afraid uh, that that artwork just uh, <laughs> I, I can't help but kind of chuckle when I see it and it makes him look silly to me. Uh, sorry, Magmasaur. Hey, thanks for the attention, guys. You guys have a great day, and I hope to see you soon. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like the stuff or if you have other ideas. I'd appreciate any directions. Bye.